welcome. Synthmaker is included free with FL Studio Producer Edition and Upward. It allows you to create your own synths, effects and dashboards. Today we'll use Synthmaker in drag and drop mode to give you a basic overview of how you can make an effect. We'll make a ring modulator, then an echo delay with filter. Let's start by loading Synthmaker as an effect. In this mode, the default project is an echo delay. Here's the interface. We'll use this project as the basis of a ring modulator. Ring modulation is the multiplication of input audio with another signal, such as a sine wave. So here's the Synthmaker interface. You'll notice to the left the toolbox panel and further left filter categories. These change what's shown in the toolbox window. You can also search for modules here. The navigator above allows you to swap the main windows to show various modes. Here's the interface and the schematic. So here we have an echo delay. Let's make our ring modulator. Click modules and press the delete key to remove them. Leave only the audio in and out modules. From the DSP category, load a pack and unpack module. These duplicate stereo signals, so you don't need a set of modules for the left and right channel. We're not using independent left-right processing here. Link the audio inputs and outputs to the audio input and output of the pack modules. Click and drag to link. You can click and drag to select multiple modules and move them together. We'll just link the input to the output of the pack modules to test the signal is passing through unchanged. To unlink, click and drag the connection off the target. Ring modulation generally multiplies a sine wave by the input audio, so we'll need a multiply audio stream module. Link it to the pack module input and outputs, so audio passes through the multiply module. Notice the multiply stream module has two inputs and one output. One is for your input audio and the other, in this case, a sine wave oscillator. From the audio tab, add a sine wave oscillator and link its output to the free multiply stream modules input. The sine oscillator module had some controls, so we'll need to add something to control those too. Sounds like we'll need a knob or slider. From the GUI tab, add a vector knob. Click the P in the lower right corner to open its properties. Then set its max output to 0.3. We're just limiting the range here. The frequency input is scaled between 0 and 1 for 0 to 44.1 kHz, so 0.3 max is about 13 kHz on the vector knob, and it's a more usable range. Now link the vector knob output to the sine oscillator frequency input. The knob now controls the frequency of the sine oscillator. So let's make an echo delay. Relink the input and output as a dry signal. We'll then add a duplicate delayed signal and remove the multiplication. From the DSP tab, add an interpolated delay module. We'll also add a dzipper module to smooth the changes from the vector knob output to the delay time input. Change the vector knob's max range to 10,000. As the delay time input is in samples, it will be equal to about 230 milliseconds. Okay, now for some fun. Let's add back that DSP tab stream multiply module. Then add another GUI vector knob with the default settings. Link the output of the new vector knob to the input of the multiply stream module. Then link the output of the delay module to the other input of the multiply stream module. Then link its output back in the input of the delay module to create a feedback loop. The vector knob becomes the feedback amount knob since it's multiplying the audio stream values between 0 and 1, depending on the knob value. And this is sent back into the input. To polish this off, I'll add a filter in the feedback loop. From the DSP tab, add a Moog filter and put it between the multiply stream module output and the feedback path into the delay module, so each delay becomes more and more filtered with each feedback loop.
Okay, so let's use this in FL Studio. When a Preset Manager module is present from the Preset tab and Auto is selected in the knob Properties, remember to press P on any module to see these, then they can be added to FL Studio Multilink when tweaked. For example, we can now right click the Multilink button and choose Create Automation Clips. So that's it. You can see that working with SynthMaker is a matter of dragging and dropping modules from the tool library onto the schematic window. Why not check the links with this video to the SynthMaker manual to learn about the hundreds of modules that you have at your disposal. Until next time, enjoy messing with SynthMaker.